Hello, my name is Philip Northover. I'm the Technical Service Manager for Southern California and Arizona uh, with FMC. Uh, today I'm in a field of strawberries uh, in Ventura County, California, just near Oxnard. And I'm here to talk to you today about a pest that's of major concern to strawberry growers here and all along the West Coast. Lycus bugs, which may also be referred to as tarnished plant bug or western tarnished plant bug, depending on which specific species you're dealing with, are major pests in coastal production areas here in California from Ventura County all the way north to Santa Cruz County in the, in the Watsonville area. Lycus bugs have a wide host range that includes a number of crops that are grown here in California, uh, such as alfalfa, broccoli, celery, cauliflower, grapes, strawberries, as, and tomatoes. Um, and also it impacts a number of weeds too, uh, which are important as I'll mention in a few moments, uh, such as mustards, uh, lamb quarters, uh, composites, and, and legumes are all uh, good host uh, for, good, excellent hosts for, for the ligus bugs. So in regions along the central coast where strawberry harvest can occur in June or later, ligus populations may increase through the summer months. Um, here in Ventura County, in the summer planted strawberry fields, Ligus has become well established and also presents a problem for fall plantings, such as the one I'm currently in, which is uh, quite impacted, which has been impacted quite heavily with uh, ligus bugs. So, to identify ligus bugs, and there are a lot of other um, pe uh, insects, both non pests and even beneficials that do resemble them, only the adult ligus bugs have wings and they're about a quarter of an inch in length, uh, generally oval, and have a somewhat flattened appearance. Uh, they generally appear from, in color from green to brown uh, with, a red, with reddish brown markings on their wings. Um, a small yellow or pale green triangle uh, visible near the middle of the dorsal side or back is, uh, it can also be observed. Uh, because the eggs, which are very minute, are implanted directly into the fruit and leaf tissue, uh, they are readily, they're not readily observed. Um, be very difficult to find them. Now the first and second instar star nymphs can be confused with aphids. Um, Ligus nymphs are much more active than aphids. They tend to move quite quickly across plant surfaces. And they do not possess the paired cornical structures at the tip of the abdomen, which are characteristic of aphids. Ligus bugs feed with piercing sucking mouth parts, which they use to feed on the acine or developing seed of the strawberry, which is high in protein and exactly what ligus bugs need for their diet. As a result of this feeding activity, uh, the soft tissue of the fruit under the seed uh, fails to develop normally, and that you can end up with is distorted, misshapen fruit, um, also referred to as cat facing. There are also other factors that may cause somewhat similar symptoms, such as poor pollination and environmental factors. So symptoms alone should not be relied upon for insecticide applications. And uh, we've got some examples of distorted fruit right here. Uh, the cat facing symptom I was mentioning. You can see just uh, looking at there, clearly distorted. And again there, that's all the result of typically what is ligus, ligus feeding. Uh, and there is extensive, extensive damage uh, throughout uh, much of this uh, strawberry field. There's another example right there. So you can see just all examples of um, cat-faced fruit. So it's not possible to outgrow these symptoms. The fruit doesn't recover. So they're basically rendered unmarketable. Um, obviously it impacts yield and obviously the quality is poor and harvest efficacy, which ultimately result in potential financial losses. So effective ligus management requires an understanding of ligus biology and the life cycle. And this begins with careful monitoring within strawberry fields and its alternate hosts. Um, the recommended procedure for sampling for ligus is to use a beading tray, uh, which can be any type of tray you really want. In this case, I have a 12 inch embroidery hoop along with uh, some muslin that's been stretched in between them. And uh, these can be made, uh, found at craft stores just about everywhere. Uh, essentially this forms a nice, a nice tray, but again, almost anything can be used of comparable size and uh, which allows the insects to be identified and, and counted. So you want to split the field into four equal areas to be monitored individually and proceed along a 200 foot section of each area sampling one strawberry plant every 10 feet by positioning the beading tray at the base, base of the plant and striking the plants three or four times. So just as I'm about to show you here, 
you want to basically put the uh, find a plant I think I'm probably about 10 foot away 10 foot away from where I was and just want to go put the entire tray underneath there and just what you can so in this case um, didn't find anything so I'll go down another 20 feet or sorry 10 feet look down find a plant and what do I have here well let's take my word for it I've got nothing again which is a good sign and you want to keep doing that for the for that entire 200 foot section and uh, count how many insects you have and it's important that you are familiar with the appearance of lagus bugs as the nymphs appear superficially similar to aphids uh, calicorus bugs uh, which is a non-pest of strawberry and are often um, confused with lagus but uh, if you look at the back there are a series of black dots and dark wing tips which contrast with uh, lagus adults which have no black dots on the back whatsoever uh, there are also species that could also cause further confusion, such as the false chinch bug, and beneficial predators such as the big-eyed bug, uh, big-eyed bugs. So an insecticide application is triggered when one ligeth nymph or adult in 20 plants is detected using this sampling technique. So clearly the threshold for ligus is very low. So if I'd gone up, gone up along the row, if I'd found, uh, gone through 20 plants, had found one ligus, that's an indication that it's time to uh, put it some sort of management plan. Uh, usually chemical into action. So this method of monitoring is also effective to detect infestations of aphids and Lepidoptera which are also, can also be dislodged under the tray. So even if ligus bugs have not been a problem, monitoring the field and, and scouting um, is never a bad thing. So within the field should the distribution be localized or concentrated in one specific area of the field, it may be possible to just treat that area of the field. Um, being aware that uh, new ligus bugs, uh, such as new adults, may potentially fly into that area or come from other regions. But if it's got a low level, you might be able just to apply that portion to that corner of the field or that section where you're seeing these high concentrations. As weeds can also harbor lig ligus bugs, assessing the presence of ligus in weeds and other alternate hosts is best performed by using a sweep net, such as what I've got here, in which um, it's best to uh, sweep the upper third of the plant canopy not the strawberries but any weeds uh, weeds in the field and, or weeds in the field or nearby the field or in the periphery of the field and also along roadways for example uh, and anywhere you've got potential weeds ligus bug nymphs may be present and you want to make sure that you're uh, accounting for those as well not just the ones in your field now, now nymphs do not fly but adults can make their way into the strawberry crop so in the central coast area, adult ligus bugs typically overwinter from September to January on flowering plants and legumes, such as clover, vetch, among others, um, on the outside of strawberry fields. Um, overwintering on strawberries may occur um, during the fall migration and on second year strawberries, which have just become infested with adults' flights from the first year. Uh, so three seasonal populations of nymphs occur here on the central coast. May or early June, late June or early July, and July or August depending on location and temperature conditions. Third generation adults overwinter and will lay eggs in the, in the spring contributing to next season's outbreak. So here in the Oxnard area, ligus populations cycle through, throughout the year. Adults move between strawberry plantings and from alternate hosts such as beans, various weeds, um, even flowering ornamental plants. So, it's important, again, to keep monitoring to determine if and when you need to take a control action. So the most effective timing for target nymphs is soon after egg hatch, um, after the overwintering adults have invaded the strawberry field, when the great, which is when the greatest percentage of the, the ligus are present as nymphs. In Ventura County on the whole, uh, migrations of adults occur uh, to both the summer plantings and fall plantings at some time after initiation of flowering. So you want to apply the first spray at 252 degree days, um, base 54 de degrees, from the date you find the first adult in the strawberry fields. 
So insecticides are often used for managing ligus. Uh, younger nymphs are more susceptible to the current insecticides than older nymphs or adults. Um, effective management is dependent on monitoring, as I've mentioned before. So there are a few, there are a few modes of action uh, that are currently registered for ligus. Um, so therefore, good stewardship of the existing chemicals is necessary to at least mitigate or slow the development of any insecticide resistance. So the organophosphates and the pyrethroids have been used for years and have been, and have been applied successfully for years. And while they are still effective in many parts of the growing region, localized resistant populations have been reported. It is suggested that the use of pyrethroids, such as Brigade WSB, be saved for later in the season, while products such as Belief Group 29 be used earlier in the season. In the case of Belief, two applications at the first two timing is recommended and is generally safe on beneficials, therefore preserving that free insect control uh, by Ligus predator nymphs such as big-eyed bugs, uh, damsel bugs, minute pirate bugs, and uh, several species of, of spiders, which can all help to suppress Ligus populations. So I mentioned the importance of weed control earlier on. So you want to control infested weeds um, using a registered herbicide while the Ligus are still nymphs, but before they emerge as adults. So dried out weeds are not attractive to adults, and if present, adults will migrate to other hosts, including strawberries. Mustards, pepper weeds, uh, lupines, fillery, lamb's quarters, and common grounds will all provide ligus with habitat, habitat as they are present throughout the, throughout the strawberry growing season. So to summarize, um, to effectively manage ligus bugs in strawberries, it is critical that you identify the pest and monitor its level. In other words, scouting is very important, both in the strawberry crop and uh, potentially in nearby weeds. Uh, utilizing degree days uh, will also help to provide an estimate as to the key events in the development of the ligus population, um, when they will occur, and this will assist in the timing of applications of insecticides, again, such as Brigade WSB and Belief, as well as some of the other uh, groups that are registered, um, such as the organophosphates uh, as well. For FMC, my name is Philip Northover. I'm the Technical Service Manager for Southern California and Arizona. And uh, thank you for taking your time to watch this video and uh, good luck through th throughout the growing season. Bye for now.